Whoa, where'd my hat go? Hey, how's it going? This is John Clark with Kinetic. And in this video, I'm gonna break down Dante AVIOs or commonly called ABOs. I'm gonna go through some troubleshooting and some common problems. They're usually networking as far as if you can't mount it on a console or you're not seeing it in Dante controller, how you can kind of solve that. I'm also gonna show you some practical applications for this, be it using it with Zoom or a playback device. So in this video, I'm using the USB AVIO, but everything I'm talking about works with pretty much all the other AVIOs with the exception that this one is powered over USB or PoE and the XLR models are only powered over PoE and you would need a PoE switch to do that. This is one of the items that is in my Pelican that travels with me everywhere. So eventually I'm gonna break down what's in my Pelican. When I make that video, you can see it here. Anyway, stay tuned. The first thing we're gonna do is jump into some troubleshooting. That's gonna be first. Remember to like and subscribe. Okay, so I have taken my AVO and I have hooked it up to my other computer. I'm seeing signal lights on that, but if I come to my computer in Dante controller, it's not showing up at all. And if I go into device info, it doesn't have an IP address. It says device lock, not available, back in routing, I don't even see it. And then on my QL, it's staying virtual. If I go in here and I look at device list, it populates, but it's staying virtual. So here's how we fix that. So as you can see in device info, if we go to routing first, I'm sorry, we don't see the AVIO at all. It doesn't even populate here. And in device info, it's not there. Now, that's most likely because you're plugging into a static network, which is a good thing. I try to really preach like static over DHCP. That way, when people start plugging things in or moving them around, IP addresses aren't changing and your audio network is very consistent. So, like a lot of these videos, we're going to dive into a little bit of networking. The first thing we have to do is we have to figure out what the IP address is here because we're not even seeing it. So, I'm going to exit. Dante controller, and I'm going to go to system preferences, not app store, and I'm going to go to network, and we are going to change this to DHCP. It takes a little bit more time because the IP address needs to be assigned rather than us manually entering it. We're gonna wait till this goes green or yellow. Okay, so we have changed to DHCP and I'm gonna go back into Dante controller, refresh, and look, now I have an IP address. So this is 169.254, but I don't see my other devices. And the other devices were in a 10.10.10 range. I remember that because I sent them. So in order to get everything, I'm going to go into network, I'm sorry, device info, double click here, network config, and now a manual. IP address, I'm gonna be 10.10.10. I'm gonna put that into something different. We'll say 40. Just make sure it's something that isn't a, an existing device or the, a, the, the number you plan on using for your computer itself. So 255. 255, 255, and zero. And we're going to apply. Yes. Now I'm going to exit all of this stuff and I'm gonna go back in to manual. And now I'm gonna put this in a 10 dot range because everything else is in this range, 10.10.10. .10 .10. And I usually do like 55 or 65 for laptops and machines. Boots up immediately, and now I'm gonna go into Dante controller. Okay, I'm gonna jump in and show you. So I set up my device here, but I had to stop for a second because I remembered you need to 
unplug and replug this in if you change your IP addresses. Otherwise, it doesn't change. So I unplugged it, plugged it back in. Now I'm within this IP range, and when I launch Dante Controller, there is all three of my devices. There's my QL, there's my Electrosonics M2, and there is the AVO. Now, if this solved my problem here, if I go into network status, this is all green, clock status, this is all green, routing, nothing weird here. If I go into the console, let's see if I can mount it. So Dante setup, device mount, device list, there's the AVO. Now you remember last time this was, uh, it was always kind of not mounting. It was in a virtual kind of thing. We're gonna hold here. And device connected, boom. Okay, so to break down what we just did, I know that kind of seemed like a lot of stuff, but let me break it down a little bit for you. I, uh, in Dante Controller, we didn't see this popping up in the routing and under device, uh, I couldn't even see a IP address for this. So the first thing we had to do is figure out what the IP address was and then change it to be within the same IP range as our other stuff. So I took everything else out of line and I just had this and then I set my uh, LAN port on my computer to be DHCP. I reloaded up Dante controller, then this populated immediately. I went into the network preferences and I changed the IP address of this device to be within the same range as my other devices. So in this network, everything is a 10 dot range. Like this console is 10.10.10.94. So I just made this 10.10.35, 20, anything that, you know, isn't that. And then I also learned, I, I, I learned it in the process of making this video that in order for that new IP address to take hold, what you gotta do is power down the device and kind of do it again. So unplug, replug in if it's a USB. If it's a PoE device, then you're gonna wanna just unplug it or power it down and then power it back up again and the new IP address should, should have taken hold and all of your problems should have pretty much been solved doing that. So, I would say every time I've had a problem with these, if somebody said I couldn't mount it, or it's not populating in the console, and it's not populating in Dante Controller, it's just been a networking issue, and hopefully this helps you fix that. Whoa, where'd my hat go? Now that we covered some troubleshooting, let's, uh, let's set up and use our AVO. So next I'm gonna show you guys a couple things. One, just simply mounting it to your uh, Yamaha console, and then two in, two out on that. And then also let's hook up, a, oh, I'm gonna hook up my other computer over there and we'll use that as a playback machine and have that also hit the console. And then lastly, we'll use, uh, we'll go computer into uh, DAW so that I can multi-track in another, another computer. We'll, we'll do that and that'll be it. So cool, that's what's happening now. Okay, so I have my USB AVIO hooked up to my desktop. And this desktop could be Zoom, it could be Playback Pro, QLab, Spotify, even vMix, right? And we just, we do the same thing. We're going to make sure that our audio device is set up to just the just same way as you'd hook up like a Scarlet or anything else. That is a two by two interface. And now when I go over to the QL, and, and it's right there. And then now to patch IO device, Dante input patch, Dante one, AVIO left, AVIO right, close. And now I'm gonna go to my channel one, select that, AVIO left, channel two, AVIO right.
Okay, so here in Dante Controller, if you're more familiar with this, we have an AVIO on and the console on both sides of transmit and receive. For this, since we're using my other PC as just playing Spotify right now, and again, that can be Spotify, Playback Pro, Zoom, QLab, any of those things, that is the transmitter, and the AVIO, I'm sorry, the AVIO is the transmitter, and the receiver is the QL, so I'm gonna patch those two things right there. Now I got Spotify playing, a little bit of Foo Fighters for you. Back at the console because we just patched that. Left and right channels are on one and two. I'm going to link these channels, hold them down, and then I'm going to pan left and pan right. Make sure the panning is intact, and now. So you just need to remember that you're not going to have any head amp control on the console. So whatever your source is, if that's a laptop with Playback Pro, QLab, Zoom, or a PC with vMix, you need to have all of your gain kind of situated at the source and then you just have fader control at the desk. Okay, so I've showed you how to mount uh, a device onto your console and kind of treat it like a playback device, whether you're getting audio from a laptop doing something, if that's QLab, VMAX, Zoom, whatever. I've also showed you how to patch it using Dante controller. Now what I want to show you is a couple things. Um, how we could take that first step and then because this is a two by two device, we can have bi-directional communication and we can do a mix minus for a stream. So we're gonna take in a couple channels from Zoom from, into this, from this machine to this console, but then we're also gonna give Zoom uh, the rest of our mix. And I'm gonna do that a couple ways. As I already showed you guys, we have Zoom one and two to channels one and two. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send mix one and two to the computer, but I'm not gonna put Zoom into that mix. That's why it's a mix minus. So it's gonna get everything else minus itself. Okay, so now I've showed you guys how to patch a laptop into the QL as a kind of playback device, if that's QLab, Playback Pro, whatever it is. But now let's set up a mix minus because this is a two by two device to get the mix we want from uh, maybe an in-studio room or the broadcast in general back into the laptop. Because again, this is a two by two device. So we could take two things and we could give it two things. So. If you remember, channel one and two is our AVO left and right, and that's coming to us from the laptop. So we're gonna, for the purposes of this, we'll call this a zoom, and I'm gonna show you guys a zoom mix minus. So zoom left, and zoom right. These channels are still linked. That's good. So now we're gonna do the outputs. So. I'm going to go to IO device. We've already mounted our AVIO. I've showed you guys how to mount that USB AVIO. Now I'm gonna to go to output port and I'm gonna show you the patching from the console. We're gonna use mixes one and two to send to the stream. And if I tap the device, output one, which is left, mix one, output two, which is mix two, is right. Now, this is where we get into our mix minus. I need to go into mix one. So I'm gonna to go to sends on fader, mix one. And I'm gonna take all of these things out of it. I'm gonna make sure zoom left and right is not in mix one and not in mix two. So I could confirm mix one, it's not sent there. Mix two, it's not sent there because we don't want Zoom to get itself back. If you're wondering, can I run Dante controller on the same machine that the AVIO is plugged in? Absolutely. In fact, while running this experiment, I discovered you can also run Dante virtual sound card, which I'm running right now. And when I go into Dante controller, they can all coexist 
as long as they have different IPs. So I'm also running Dante Virtual Sound Card, which is something I'll jump into after this, but just in case you're more of a Dante controller kind of guy, if you look at here, um, the receiver now is going to be the AVIO, and the transmitter is the console. So if I come here, we're patched the same way as I just did it on the console. Now I'm going to go into my audio preferences. I gotta put my phone down. Option volume key is the hotkey. And I'm gonna select my Dante USB AVIO device. And now we're gonna go into Zoom. Join with computer audio. And you see this little icon? Hit that up. And microphone in is Dante USB IO module. And then speaker is also Dante USB IO module. So the mix that you're getting from the console coming in is going to land as the microphone uh, USB IO module input. And then what you are sending to the console is going to be the Dante USB IO module as the speaker. Okay, now that I showed you that, let me show you the last thing I wanna show you guys here, and that is, this could be a laptop on a stage playing tracks or, or something, and this is a laptop that's hosting our multi-track session, and everything's in Dante. That's, that's the scenario. So I wanna take this laptop and I wanna have it land as a track within my DAW. That's what I'm gonna show you now. Okay, so now I'm gonna, show you how to just take a simple laptop. We're gonna bypass the console and then I'm gonna multi-track it on this computer. So the AVIO is hooked up to this computer. This could be something doing tracks on a stage or something. It's playing something that we need to get into a multi-track. So I'm gonna jump into this computer and I'm gonna show you how we can take this AVIO and have it land as two tracks because it's a two by two interface in Reaper. Okay, so this is the laptop that's on a stage playing tracks or whatever. I have its audio device set to the Dante USB IO module and I am going to take that in on this computer and have it land as a stereo track. Also, good to note, we're not using the console for this demonstration, but that AVIO device is still mountable. So I can have it land on the console and kind of take audio here and route it different places and I can also at the same time have it land here. So for this laptop, we're running Dante Virtual Sound Card. <clears throat> this is running eight by eight. And option volume key here. Dante Virtual Sound Card is selected. And now I'm gonna go into Dante Controller. And there's my QL1. As you can see, this is still patched, that AVIO. So what we have done there can be done simultaneously and is still patched here. But now I'm gonna go into my DAW. So the receiver is gonna be the MacBook Pro and I'm gonna have that land as inputs one and two of what, what the DAW would consider the inputs of a physical sound card. So that's selected, and now I'm gonna jump into Reaper. And if you look, I already had a track kinda there. This is a stereo track, stereo one and two, and that reflects what we just patched in Dante Controller as one and two. So what you see jumping here in the meter is actually reflective of what's going on in that computer. So now I've just easily landed uh, stereo left and right from this machine as a stereo track in my DAW right here. And you could just label this, you know, laptop stage and take it there. And now at the same time, I also have it on the console because we already took that in. So there is the channels for this USB device landing on my console and those two same channels are also landing in my DAW. Okay, also remember you wanna go into Reaper, Preferences, 
and you want to set your audio device to Dante Virtual Sound Card. Okay, so in conclusion, I know I've really talked about the USB version of this. I used to have the XLR versions of the AVIOs, and honestly, I just, I just didn't use them compared to how much I use this uh, USB version. The USB version can be powered over USB. The other ones can only be powered via PoE, so you have to have a PoE switch in your kit, which is no problem. I have tons of those, but I just really didn't use it. Um, if you have Rios, you're probably gonna use the ins and outs of that to occupy what you would use with an AVIO. Most people I know that have these have the USB versions because of the exact reasons I showed you guys. We're either using it to, to take in uh, playback from a machine, we're multi-tracking, or I'm doing a stream. And because the USB version is a two by two, I could take two channels in and I can give two channels. So that just makes it that much more versatile. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found the troubleshooting part of this helpful. If, if you're not strong with networking and you're just used to running everything at DHCP, how running it in static could be beneficial. Also, if you saw, I, I unplugged this and I plugged it into three different machines. My PC over there, this laptop, and this laptop. And because every, this was a set static IP address associated with this Dante device, it didn't matter what machine I plugged it into as long as the Cat5 coming out of here was going into a switch that was part of the same network ecosystem as everything else. So I can go machine to machine, I can carry this with me anywhere, and because I know what the IP address is, I can easily incorporate it into my Dante network wherever I'm at. So that is that. Again, thanks for watching, I'm John Clark. I hope you found this helpful, rock on. Remember to like and subscribe.